What's next, Captain? Well, I believe you've got a little side project going on, haven't you? Yes, a complete surprise, as it turned out. <laughs> oh, how I love boat surprises. <laughs> Let me show you. People have asked why we are paying 150 euros a month to stay in the studio apartment when we can actually stay on board ABC in this yard. Well, the reality is because right now ABC looks like this. This generally is stored in here and I've taken it out Bazzy because when I, I was in here looking for something and I noticed that some of these are wet, they've got salt, somehow salt water is getting in there, not a lot, but some of them are damp, damp enough that they need um, drying out. This is the underneath of the uh, switch for the windlass. Uh, this is the, the down switch. It could be coming in through there because the silicon is, well, it's not very good. So we might have to remove the switch and re-silicon that. Uh, and if we're going to do that, we'll do the other one as well because again, there's the silicon there. So it could be could be the silicon that just needs replacing in, in, at the two switches. There were a couple of comments that were showing some concern about Ansha going up the mast while we were on the hard. And yeah, it's generally frowned upon that you go up the mast on the hard. But um, I am very, very confident in the stands here at the, at the boatyard. They are solidly built. I will show you now. So this is the stand at the aft of the boat. And uh, as you can see, solidly built, good uh, leg surface area and not designed to move at all. Then we've got this other jack stand here and another big one here we've got these side props on either side and just as like it is at the back they've also got the same sort of big chunky stands here at the front and there as well so we were quite confident that Ansha was going to be safe she was only going halfway up the mast anyway uh, not all the way to the top so yeah it's one of those can of worms subjects isn't it I was always of the understanding that the anode should make direct contact with the iron of the keel. But this side here looks as though it's got paint underneath, whereas the other side has got a bit of paint uh, and some exposure to the, to the iron keel. So let us know in the comments whether it should be completely free of paint or whether it should be painted. I'll just give that a good clean up so when we put the new anodes on, we make good contact. The prop shaft anode is held into place by a pair of hex head nuts and bolts. And the first one I tried came off fairly straightforward and fairly easily. However, when I got to the second one, the nut and bolt had frozen together. So that was a question of spraying with WD-40, let it do its thing for a while and then come back and jam a screwdriver around the edge of the nut to stop it spinning. Ah, oh, and while I've got you, just want to say to Nikos, thanks very much for lending us these tools. It is making life so much easier for us. And also just take a moment here to pause and say hello and welcome aboard to our latest patron, Gunther. Thank you for joining the club. Fitting the new anode to the prop shaft was a lot of fun too, because the bolts that come with them are just slightly short and you've got to really belt the anode into place and just hope that you get some sort of purchase at some point. It took a while, it was quite frustrating, but we got there in the end.
dear www.zinity.com please just make the bolts a little bit longer it would make life so much easier just a tad I mean look when you look at this side it looks fairly okay and you know I probably could have left that on and got a bit more use out of it however when you look at this side you can see it starts to corrode first uh, where the with a bolt and nut and bolt go through so there's if I left that on then potentially yeah, that's just going to fall off and then I lose the whole anode. So, best just to take it off and put a new one on. I was having a chat with Ant from Ant and Sid Sailing about our battery situation that happened last October where we had to replace all three house batteries. And one of the things he suggested was to get a battery desulfator, especially if you've got brand new batteries and put it on as soon as you can. It keeps the plates inside the batteries from sulfating and gives them a longer lifespan. So I installed this the other day, it's fairly straightforward, you just attach the, the negative wire to the end of your negative connections and your positive wire to the end of your positive connections. And then it will pulse throughout all three batteries and basically just vibrates the, uh, the plates and shakes the sulphate off them over time. The instructions said that it would um, automatically uh, detect whether it was 12, 24 or 48 volts, which it did. And then the little red light comes on when it's actually sending a pulse through the batteries. You can also push this little button and it tells you what your voltage of your batteries are. Currently at 14 volts, which is very nice. My only concern with the unit is the little beeping noise it makes when the red light is flashing. And in the silent darkness of night time, will it be an annoying beep for whoever's sleeping in this berth? I might have to put an on off switch here and switch it off at night. First job on the list today is to have a look at the keel bolts and that of course means that we've got to take the saloon seating apart here just next to the galley uh, and take everything out of there and also take the floor of that or the sole of that out as well so we can get access to the bolts. So here's our, our keel bolt situation. There's a small one here, single one here, double there and four here by the, the lowest point of the bilge. I'm going to assume there's going to be another three uh, in a bunch there, and then there'll be a single one just by the mast. So the ones that we want to inspect are going to be these here. So I'll probably uh, take the glass from that one and the glass from that one and see how they look. And while we're here, of course, we will give the bilge a bloody good clean. Expose the top of one of the bolts that goes through uh, the hull and into the keel and just from looking at the top of it it looks you know very solid it doesn't look as though there's any rust but with that being said the nut section is further down in the uh, deeper part of the fiberglassing and it's proving really difficult to, to cut away the fiberglass and plus the fact I really don't want to do any damage to the nut and bolt so we're gonna say that it's good and uh, clean the bilges and put everything back together. So that's good news. And then I can just resin over the top of that. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's uh, do some cleaning. Bilge is looking a bit better. Certainly is. In last week's video, we asked you about the water coming out of our kicker at this point when we dropped the topping lift. And some of you suggested that maybe the kicker or boomfang is actually on upside down. Well, I've had a look at it and I don't think it can be turned around and I'll tell you why. If we look at the base of the kicker where this uh, steel cable is attached and follow this all the way up it eventually comes to a pulley here and that pulley comes back down and the cable comes back down and attaches to this block and of course this is our kicker sheet. So I don't think that this can be turned around the other way simply because this would then be in the totally wrong configuration. Let us know in the comments below what you think. With my curiosity about the keel bolts now quite sated, it's time to dig deeper into this little weeping part of the keel and uh, find out what's exactly going on there. It looks like a crack that's been badly filled and allowed water to get in there. I'm 
going to let that dry out a little bit more and I'll take some more of the uh, old corking away from the hull and keel joint. Get a better look at that. I've exposed a lot more of this and I'm thinking that this is probably the lower part of the bilge where the bilge pump lives and this is where it meets the keel on the outside. So there is quite a lot of water still coming out of here. So we're going to leave that exposed and let it drain out. It's not coming from inside, that's for sure, because we did the, uh, the bilges yesterday and they are dry as. So this has got in here from somewhere else, possibly up here. So we'll certainly fully dry that out before we seal it back up again. Once again, many, many thanks to our great viewers and subscribers who offer us up so many helpful tips and hints. It's really making our boat work on ABC go a lot smoother with a lot less casualties along the way. If you like this video, remember to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber so that you don't miss out on future episodes of Sailing ABC.